I know you're currently mashing keys in the comment section asking if there will ever be a season 4 video, but what that actually translates to is I'm not following you on Twitter because if I was, I'd know that you've been in the process of making said video since September. So good job on outing yourself as a fake fan. Very bad. The ratio is not prosperous. Very bad. If you're that desperate for that video, then may I present to you my Patreon. Right now, as an invincible tier, you can watch the first 44 minutes of the video. These 44 minutes only cover the first 9 episodes of season 4, because that's how much of a piece of shit <coughs> it is, and that should give you an idea of how long the final video will be. So you can do that, or simply be patient and watch the full thing for free when it's done. I'm only promoting this because someone kept bugging me saying I stole their Christmas like the Grinch for not publishing a video that hasn't even been made. No doubt there are more people like that fella. Also, let's not forget about the rule. Madvocate postpones the release of his video by a week anytime someone asks him about the flash. Yeah, don't forget it, or you're never gonna get that video. Currently sitting at a three year wait time. Before proceeding, a word from our sponsor. At Olive Garden, sauce is the soul. It turns lasagna into a classico. It's what takes you on a tour of Italy and chicken and shrimp carbonara to the next level. Our amazing sauces made from scratch every day. And they all pair perfectly with our never-ending first course. That's always on us. Olive Garden, we're all family here. I watched both Sanic movies the other day because people have asked if I can give the Sanic movies the same treatment that I do with The Flash. There is a problem though, the characters and their premises are nothing like each other, to no one's surprise, and there really isn't much to say about the super speed in these movies upon a first look. This is kinda perfect though, because I wanted to make a short man to prevent cobwebs and tumbleweed from collecting on the channel. Being mostly a buddy cop slash ET movie, Sonic 1 spends a lot of time goofing around. He's a nice kid in a fish out of water with no crime fighting responsibilities and no science team made up of the most brilliant minds. He has some sense of what being a hero is from observing Donut Lord and from reading Flash comics, but if those are anything like the CW show, then scratch that. <laughs> Speed-wise, he's similar to CW Flash, but given his physique and stature, he clearly wouldn't be able to relocate people, nor does the movie establish that he can. He can kind of push people across a small distance, but needs to gain height to be able to, so thankfully an OP move that breaks nearly the entirety of the Flash can be disregarded with Sonic. His biggest desire is to have friends, and his endgame is to portal to another planet once he accidentally puts himself on the government's radar. Because of this premise and the fact that it all takes place in less than two hours, it's easier to accept Sonic's mistakes made along the way. Nor will these mistakes ever be as infuriating as Barry's, an adult man who's already mastered neutralizing criminals and figured out Flash Time by episode 2. Sonic also has something of a Flash Time himself, which I personally prefer they hadn't introduced, but alas. My only gripe with Sonic 1 in terms of using his powers is how contrived the setup for the whole adventure is. He thinks he has to go somewhere else to toss a ring when he hears drones above his cave, when he knows this will just take a second and the ring won't stay open that long. He doesn't even leave in a hurry, he wastes time by saying bye to his cave and walks away, when this time could have been spent teleporting himself out. And despite having avoided getting caught by someone hostile multiple times in the past, Sonic just freezes like a deer in the headlights when Donut Prince kicks in the garage door with an attitude. At least none of this ruins him as a hero, which is the worst thing you can do if your intention is to portray your protagonist as a great great hero. This scene almost had me upset, but then it made me coom in my underpants. When Eggman's mini tank launches this EMP disc, Sonic doesn't grab it himself, but he does warn Donut Minister that it's coming. But once a barrage of EMPs are launched, Sonic performs cinema. Unfortunately, right after, Donut Chief decides to handle this tiddly wink of a robot himself and makes Sonic drive even though it's a much less menacing robot compared to the much bigger one Sonic fucked up with ease. So that idiocy is on Donut Master. The rest of the movie is pretty cool. Even though Eggman may be a normal human, he was able to use his 5 degrees and a quill to grant the ship and the pilot super speed. We can infer this because during this time in a bottle sequence, his ship starts moving normally once the quill sends a shockwave through it. And Eggman 
Eggman is shown controlling its movements, which is how he's able to catch up to Sonic and make turns on a dime. And the climax of the final fight is fucking awesome. <laughs> Sanic 2 begins with a neat little crime fighting scene, one that he instigates on his own volition, which follows his arc from the first movie. Better buckle up! <laughs> Why'd you just let the police handle this? Because that's not what heroes do! You are terrible at this! You're a terrible hero! Sonic, you destroyed an entire city block. I stopped a robbery. I was a hero. No, you put people in danger and that's not what a hero does. Holy Christ, Sonic 2 already did what The Flash failed to do twice in four seasons. Tell the hero he is bad at his job without cowarding out. Both times Flash has acknowledged this, they immediately hand wave the criticism away with some bullshit defense. All this could have been avoided if you just stopped light instead of chit-chatting with her. She caught Barry off guard. He's the fastest man alive, how could she possibly do that? Because light looks exactly like my ex-girlfriend, Linda Park. Looking for this? I know Zoom's sitting here to tell me good news. You don't have to do that. I'm not taking down the cash. And then what? Zoom's not gonna like you just right? My friends might help you. Can you check me for Zoom's? Alright, we'll take it down a little bit. Have a little conversation. Alright. Thank you. Linda? Linda Park? You're the Flash! You could have saved him and caught her. Alright, look, Ralph, I'm always gonna make the decision to help the person in danger first. That's what we do here. <laughs> No real complaints with this scene, we have a new foe with super speed who may not be as fast as Sonic, but he makes up for it with sheer strength. There's this moment where Sonic chooses not to run out of here at full speed, but I imagine it's because he doesn't want to leave Tails behind. And even though Tails is smaller than him, relocating hasn't been established. And if I'm going to give the Snyder Cut a pass on this, then Sonic 2 gets one as well. Tails technically does have super speed when using her butt copter, but it appears- uh, Oh, what's that? Wait, Tails is a boy? Tails technically does have super speed when using his butt copter, but it appears he's gotta give it a second to power up. The big issue with this chase is Sonic having quite the case of far from home plot armor, but that ain't got to do with his speed. The temple fight is really cool. Man, that CGI is such a step up from the first film. I actually read that because of the last minute Sonic redesign in Sonic 1, the visual effects studio that Paramount outsources to for these movies severely increased their rates, but Paramount was more than willing to chip in the money necessary to make it look amazing. Look up Sonic Inflation for more info. The temple fight goes well until... <clears throat> Knuckles stops to watch. Wait! That wasn't the deal! But I trusted you! You are my friend! <laughs> I'm sorry, that just hit me funny. Let this be my final lesson to you. You didn't win a celestial skin tag. Friends are open, honest, and vulnerable with each other. Which means x squared times high bottoms y squared divided by the absolute value of friendship equals Dookie! Oh no. Yeah, I only said Knuckles. Gonna go good faith here and say Sonic's rather winded and not as fast after running across an ocean through this big ass maze. Throughout this fight, repeatedly spin dashing into Knuckles and getting pounded by Knuckles. We even see him grabbing his arm, indicating injury. But 30 seconds of Eggman spitting in Knuckles' face really feels like a long time for Knuckles to not even try to punch his teeth in. Ultimately, given how far away Knuckles is and how he's only as fast as a speeding car, it probably wouldn't have mattered in the end, as Eggman could have seen him coming and simply reached for the emerald. I would have simply tweaked the scene a smidge to either have Eggman monologue after grabbing the emerald, or to portray more urgency in Knuckles. I like how simple the final battle feels in the sense that the plan plays out quickly and doesn't take longer than it needs to. Sonic runs for a while through the forest to lure Eggman and they show him actually getting tired, supporting the idea that he was nearly tapped out in this scene, and consequently leading up to him getting too damaged to do anything. But he soon turns into our lord and savior, Jeebus Christ, to save his family. To infinity and be- Oh my god, what are you doing, Sonic? What's the point of pushing the foot up only to allow it to fall back down? This thing is like the size of a soccer field and the Wazowskis are still underneath it. They're dead, my small mannequin. We just have to assume they got up and ran fast enough before the foot came down. But Sonic could really be a little more aware of his surra- No, no, Sonic, stop! 
You didn't even bother checking on them before slicing the head off. Come on, man. Leave the blue blow alone, mad for cock. What the fuck do you know about being a hero? All right, take it easy, Jeb. I've only had like three major criticisms across these two movies. So you can sleep easy at night knowing Sonic is a better hero than the CW Flash. Of course he's a better hero. He's the best hero. I didn't need your fucking video to figure that out. Let me school you with Sonic or you a cultured wanker. You probably just think Sonic was never good, yet don't know that Eggman is a feminist. You probably don't even know that Sonic's middle name is also fucking Maurice. Uh, Jeb, I'm trying tropes. to end this video. Says it in the do you mind? Mad for Kurt. What about the time the military Jeb? murdered a child and executed their grandfather? <sighs> so, Flash Season 4 video is next. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me survive as I suffer making that series. And... He's really not gonna stop, huh? Uh, shout out to abuzz 3 Barry, Dominic the Donkey, Drunk Dan, Frosted Fakes, Justin Larkin, Studio Devil, and Thane for being the bushiest hedgehog and alive. The aliens. Sonic even beats literal god beings all the time. Dark Gaia, center of Earth.